This is Twit. I'm looking, I, I admit I'm looking a little bit further ahead because I knew that this would end up being a ping pong battle, which is basically the the battle between Google and any sites yep. trying to uh, lock down their, their content in a pay paywall. You had to know yep. that this was going to be a, a tennis match that was going to keep hitting back and it's forth, and yet here we are. Gonna, yep, it's going to be cat and mouse. Uh, <laughs> Google's battle to allow its incognito users' incognitoness to be incognito. Uh, we've talked about this before. We we saw this. We we knew this was going to be happening in their announcement of the features in Chrome seventy six. They um, as we know. Uh, and I'm now using Chrome 76, as is everybody who's been updating recently. Um, release 76 was intended to close a loophole that various commercial paywalled websites were using to detect when their visitors were viewing the site through their web browsers incognito mode. Um, as we know, incognito detection had been implemented because incognito mode inherently flushed the simple-minded cookie histories that were being used to permit a paywall access compromise and tease where a limited number of pages could be viewed before the site's paywall would slam shut to block further access. The understandable feeling was that if a visitor wished to be incognito when surfing the web, they should have that right. And that should also extend to include the fact that they were choosing to be incognito in the first place. And as we know, we talked about this before, prior to Chrome's release 76, incognito mode simply disabled the JavaScript file system API. Since this was trivial for a site's scripting to detect, incognito mode visitors were being blocked from having any access. So it was essentially, uh, you know, and, and well, so like if you if you visited the New York Times and I think the Washington Post with in, in incognito mode, you would just you wouldn't get anything. You would be blocked saying you are using your browser's incognito mode. We'd be happy to have you come visit, but please come back with incognito mode turned off. Well, that annoyed everybody. So this, so essentially it was let us store our crap on your computer or you don't get to see any of our site because, of course, that's what cookies are. It is stuff being that a website is storing on your computer. So what Chrome 76 now does is implement a RAM-based file system API so that the file system appears to work rather than just being like returning an error. It appears to work, but it's inherently volatile because it's just in RAM and it, thus it won't store anything permanently. So we know what happened next, right? A RAM-based file system won't behave exactly like a non-volatile file system, and that makes it detectable. And yes, some sites, such as the New York Times, immediately adapted their code to do just that. Cram, uh, Chrome's File System API presents a smaller maximum file system size. It says that it's going to be that there is 120 megabytes of available file system. If that when the when the script the JavaScript queries the file system API of how much space you got. Chrome 76. Rather than saying, eh, error, file system API not available, it says, ah, we're here and open for business. We got 120 meg. Well, it turns out that's a fixed number. And this is not what's seen when the browser is not in incognito mode. 
So that's one feature. Also, writes to RAM present a consistent timing compared to writes to physical media where the timing will vary. Both these incognito detection bypasses bypasses have been demonstrated. And as I mentioned, they've been found to be used in the wild. In the show notes, I have a snippet uh, which was taken from the New York Times website. And it says in the JavaScript code, quota for an incognito Chrome window is a fraction, says parens 10%, of the device memory with an upper limit of 120 megabytes. Then it says more info colon and gives a, a link to an, someone's posting bypassing anti-incognito detection Google Chrome.html. And then incog underscore max underscore quota equals 120, which is exported as a constant. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so cat and mouse bleeping computer reached out for their reporting of this to Google to inquire about these two new incognito detection methods. They were told that Google stands by their previous statement and position that they will quote, work to remedy any other current or future means of incognito mode detection, unquote. <sighs> so we have another new cat and mouse game afoot. And this is dumb since this is a game that Chrome can and will ultimately win. Chrome can trivially simulate the time, uh, the, the varying timing of reads from and writes to volatile media. And they can remove the fixed declared RAM-based file system size limitation trivially. So in Chrome 76, I'm sure they'll do that. And, and with any luck, the, the, the guys who are doing the web design at the other end will tell their bosses, uh, you know, uh, we could do something else, but then they'll just go around that too. So, you know, as Google said, if sites wish to be paywalled, they should require all visitors to create an account. Once that account is created, then some free access could be metered out under the site's control. But since visitors could still create throwaway accounts, a credit card or other payment means would probably also be needed to provide an anchor to that user's identity. And all of this would, of course, clearly reduce the site's traffic, since many users would choose to go elsewhere rather than to create yet one more account anywhere. And it would also mean that no one could use the site without creating at least a temporary account. This is all clearly a mess, which arises from the fundamentally irresolvable conflict inherent in the goal of wanting to provide some access to visitors who wish to have complete anonymity, right? I mean, that's, that's what this comes down to. There's a, there's it, the, it's an irresolvable conflict to provide some access to visitors who wish to have complete anonymity. I would argue that, and Google does, that anonymity ought to be a feature that a web browser can offer. And that falls in fundamental conflict to the fact that to provide some limited access, having some way of identifying a visitor is necessary, which means they're not completely anonymous. So I say bravo to Google uh, and to websites. I say good luck with that because this is not a, this is not a game they're going to win. <laughs> 